Okay, uh, so, uh, hi and good day everyone. So we will start our lecture on the log behavioral modeling part three. <coughs> so <coughs> we have discussed before about the combinational logic and sequential or sequence logic. Okay, so these two elements is very important that, that make up the finite state machine, which means that the finite state machine comprises of these two, okay, combinational and sequential or synchronous logic. <clears throat> so finite state machine, uh, we have two types, more state machine and midi state machine. We will focus more on the more state machine, okay. And after that, we will focus on the state encoding techniques. So <clears throat> uh, how many, uh, uh, the way we do the encoding, okay, encoding the state, right. <clears throat> so this is just a revision. So what is combinational and what is uh, synchronous logic. So basically, uh, here is actually the uh, main difference okay? for the combinational logic. Okay? The output here okay? is a function of input here. Okay? That's about the combinational logic. Okay? For the synchronous logic, <coughs> okay? the output here is actually depends not only on the input, which is here, but also the previous input, which is stored in the state we call state so we have a feedback loop lah, from the output and we feedback to the input okay so that's what we call as previous input lah. we re we store the previous input <coughs> so we have a memory element lah. so if, if, if we say about memory element so normally we represent using always okay always at positive h block okay maybe i make it bigger so always So this is actually uh, easiest way uh, for you to identify uh, which block implement the synchronous logic or implement the uh, what we call a feedback loop here, uh, which uh, memorize the previous input, right? <coughs> so that's why in, in, when you see here, <coughs> this depend on the clock, okay? As compared to the combinational logic, which is independent of the clock or time. Okay, the synchronous logic depend on the clock because we will use clock as a reference signal to um, uh, store the previous input, right? And and we, we have clock and of course we have flip flop nah, because uh, this always at positive H clock will produce or will generate a flip flop. Okay, and output is a function of present input and history of the input as I mentioned just now. So previous input is the history of the input. And it has memory element, it able to memorize the previous input. Okay, to memorize the previous input, we use a flip flop element. <coughs> okay, and this is implemented using always add block like this one. Always add positive h clock. Okay, always add positive h or negative h clock. Okay. So unlike the combinational logic, <coughs> okay, as I mentioned, it's time independent and in, it, it is implemented by Boolean circuit. Boolean circuit and has no memory element. Okay, and then output is immediate function of the input only, as we can see here. So that's actually the, the difference. Okay, <coughs> one has memory element, one has no memory element. That's the main difference. And to identify using the coding, you can check the clock. Lah. So the synchronous logic got clock, and uh, combinational logic is time independent, not depend on the time. Okay, and it's implemented using by a Boolean circle. This one by flip flop element. Right. <coughs> okay. So finite state machine comprises of these two. Okay. Uh, combinational and synchronous logic. The synchronous state machine. Okay. And when we, we say synchronous, means that it has clock. Uh, are one of the most common building block in modern digital system. So state machines operate at hardware speed, where software cannot. Okay. So often engineers take an ad hoc approach to design a state machine and uh, arise for the architecture and glitches. So don't worry about this one. We will talk later. So this is uh, the one that we're going to discuss more state machine or more machine. <coughs> okay. So more machines, the output only depends on the present state. And melee machine, the output depends on the present state and also the input 
it's variable. Okay, these are the two different. Uh, if you are asked what is the difference between more and milli, so more state machine depend on the uh, present state only, but milli state machine depend not only on the, on the present state but also the, on the input variable. So we will look into detail. Uh, more versus milli. So this is more type machine and this milli type machine. <coughs> okay. So the output here, just focus at the output for milli, which depend on the input and also the present state. Okay. These two. Okay. For the case of more, the output depend on the present state only. Okay. That's actually the main difference. But uh, although it depends on uh, uh, present state, okay, both Mili and more has uh, combination logic and also has synchronous logic, which is a memory element. Okay, so these two is actually uh, what we discuss here, lah. Okay? okay, synchronous and combination logic. So in terms of different between the two state machine type of state machine, uh, Mili and more, so more depends on the present state and mainly depends on the present present and also the, the input variable as mentioned here all right <coughs> both have combination logic and also synchronous logic both type of more and mainly state machine so we focus on more first okay between the two okay compared to the mainly more is easiest to to implement okay of the between the two state machine to more is the easiest the output of our combinational signal based on the present state as i mentioned just now okay so there are still issues on glitch now. okay glitches okay this is the example okay now this is very important when i say very important please take note now. okay very important <coughs> so let's say uh we want to detect okay this is your system your state is like this one this is the input of the system okay we want to detect the pattern of one one for example we have input of one zero one one zero you stream in in one bit we stream in one bit one after another so bit number one for example number two number three and number four one after another inside the system and the, the system will detect the pattern what we call as sequence detector so the system will detect inside this one how do we implement that system okay and this will say whether we detected that pattern or not so how we implement so we use uh normally we use state machine okay so in this case a more state machine we use more state machine so here is what we call as state transition diagram or std so we have um <coughs> Uh, one, two, and also three state. Okay, state zero. Okay, state one, and state two. Okay, the state zero. Okay, so we label as zero. Okay, it will first search for the pattern. Okay, pattern of the one for example we stream in this zero okay maybe the first the first uh uh number or the first value that uh goes through the system so we check eh? so zero uh this is zero so we we we, we focus on one eh? we, we we want to find this pattern one one so zero so if it is zero so then it's back to the current state eh? on the current stage then zero okay if it is find one okay and then we will go to the next one okay so in this case the first value maybe i here zero one one zero so the first value in okay so let's say this is the first so this is the first we check <clears throat> and then go through this system so it will check whether it is one or zero. So in this case, this is zero. So it remain on the current state, which is state number zero. Okay. And then next, we check for the second bit. Okay. Which is one. The second bit is one. So this stage, K 
Okay, during this stage, we are currently at state zero. So during this state, so we detect one. Okay, one which is here. Okay, detected, and then it will move to the next state, which is state number one. Okay, if you have problem, please let me know. If you not understand, please let me know. Stop me. Okay, so now we detect the bit number two, which is equal to one. Okay, so during this stage, okay, which is stage number one, we detect the next one. Okay, so if we detect the next equal to one, which is this one, now is equal to one, maybe I use different color. <coughs> okay. We are here right now because we find the first one. Then we going to look into the second one, which is in this case, yeah, we have the second one and then we move to the next state. Okay. So we found the first one. Okay. The, the, the one, the second one. This is the first one, the second one. Okay. So we get the pattern of one, one now. And then we it move to the next state, which is state number two. And now we can conclude that we found the pattern of one one, okay, inside this, uh, what we call uh, inside this this input lah, okay, all right. And then if let's say if let's say we have different input, for example, in this case after that we have zero, okay, use different color, zero. So we already uh, found the one one pattern. So now we we, we are in this state and then we check the next one which is zero right which is this one you, re, you go back to the goes back to the state zero and then we can conclude that we get the the, the pattern okay if you get another one which is for example uh, one here so one one zero one so you get one here so it will remain on the current state which is state number two right so maybe i i will repeat this huh? so let's say let's say we have this pattern zero one zero one okay we pass the first value for example this value to the system we are now in, in, at the state zero okay so we will check here lah. during this state it will check here so input equal to one. So yes, it's equal to one. And then it move to the next state. So now we are in state number one. So during the state number one, we are looking for one because pattern one one. We're looking for pattern one one. Cons two consecutive one. Okay. So in during this state, we are looking for the next one. But in, in this case, the next one is not available because we have zero to so it back to state zero okay and then it will check again <clears throat> which is here we have pattern one and then it goes back again to state number one okay but we have the next one which is um, the next one which is zero okay so it goes back to state zero means that we didn't find the pattern we can, could not find the pattern so that's actually the uh, example of uh, more bit sequence detector it will detect for example in this case two consecutive one okay we can modify this to detect uh, different different pattern for example you want to detect pattern one zero one for example so we just modify here okay so when we we pass in this inside the system maybe we here okay we take one zero one for example so we have to modify this now okay so to detect one zero one so we need to modify during state number zero okay during state so this, this is state zero okay so to detect one zero one this is okay 
and here has to be zero lah. okay to change it to zero and then we need to have another state here okay another state here to detect so now we detect zero and then to be detect one here. and then we move to the state number three okay right so this example how we detect pattern one zero one and so on okay so go back to this so to detect this pattern we use only three state machine okay three state all right okay <clears throat> so the circle uh, arrow here means that it remain on the current state same as this, uh, it goes down to the state zero. Okay, this arrow we can modify uh, depending on our requirement or our design um, design requirement. Right. So the output are a function of not only the current state but also the input. So we will apply the input just now. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the same example melee state machine just now we uh we discuss about more state machine so we have three states okay state zero state one state two okay so for the melee state machine is more simplified okay it more simplified which is we only have two state state zero and state one okay state zero and uh state number one Okay. The difference is we have uh, not only the present state, we also have combination of input. Okay, So don't worry about this one. We skip this first. We focus on the more state machine first. Okay, Why we focus on more? Because more state machine is easier to design than melee. Okay? So you don't have to simplify the, the, the state diagram. So like this one, we need to simplify the state diagram. Eh? We have combination combination of input and output. Okay, you see the the, the the label here. As compared to this one, we don't have the combination of input and output, but we have uh, the the straight okay, the straight flow. So we, if we if we found one and then we straight to the next step, stage. And then if we uh, found another another pattern one and then we move to the next stage and so on. Okay, we will look into the more simulation uh, because it's easier to design as compared to the melee okay the first design states depend on the previous state and input okay so that's only previous state means that <clears throat> so right for example right now we are here so it depends on the input and the the, the, the state now and then input if one and then we go to the next state okay the design output uh, only uh, depending on states, only depending on the state that, that we are in. Uh, okay. Whereas in melee, you have to consider both, uh, okay, both state and also input while designing the output. All right. Okay. In terms of number of state, yes, melee state use less. Okay. The number of state too kurang. For example, the only two state compared to the uh, more. More we have three state. To, to implement the same uh, detector more one one sequence detector so this is also one one sequence detector using midi but in terms of number of state uh less okay only two states but in terms of complexity uh, this is more complex uh, to to implement all right so less state state and the more since input influence the output okay all right okay so normally we use, as I mentioned to you in the class, macam saya beritahu dulu, kita hanya menggunakan case and if f saja dalam bayar block ni. Most of the uh, control ni, we use uh, activity flow control case and also if f. These are the two uh, activity flow control that we use in our, uh, to represent the process in our design. Okay, so all possible combination of current state, okay, um, and the appropriate value specified for the next state. Don't worry about this one. We will look at uh, an example. Okay. 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 This is style number one of FSM example. 
okay we have uh, this is what we call a synchronous block okay okay synchronous block with non-blocking assignment okay and this is actually what we call as combinational block okay remember we have here sorry okay combinational and also a synchronous part Right, so normally we implement uh, or design a finite state machine uh, using a different style. So this is style number one. We have uh, combinational logic, okay, and we have here synchronous logic, okay. They must have two combination, combination of these two. One to update the state, okay. Here we update the state, and here is actually to assign the state and the output, okay. And the next style, which is uh, we have cyclic behavior, is used to declare next logic state. So we have two cyclic behavior, okay. okay. One implementing, uh, uh, we we have the what we call next state logic, okay. Next state, next state logic, and this is where we update the state, okay. And like the one here we don't we only have one always block okay that implement that update the state and here we have two always block whereby the first always block is used to uh, uh, declare the next state logic okay Ni you punya state lah for example tadi uh, state number zero until state number uh, two for example yang you punya sequence uh, one one detector tu okay you design inside this okay this one you update the state okay we will look later in, in, in that example so style number three you declare the output inside the the cyclic block okay you declare the output inside the cyclic block so compared to this one the output is uh, outside the cyclic block so you assign the output outside the always block Okay, here you declare inside the always block. Okay, but you still have two always blocks. So one to uh, is, uh, to to implement the state. Okay, uh, to declare next state logic. Eh? Next state logic here, and one to update the state. Okay, together with the output. Right. So how do we encode? Eh? So normally we use binary encoding technique. So this is represents state number zero, state number one, state number two, and state number three. Okay. For the example that we discussed just now to, to, to detect the pattern of one one, so we do until state number two. Okay. All right. For more, more type distribution. Okay. We can also use one hot encoding. So one hot encoding means that we uh, represent only one bit at a time. So this, for example, one value value one at a time, one value at a time. So this is one hot encoding. Okay. So you represent four state in this case. So state number zero, state number one, state number two, and state number three. We need to have four bit. Okay, four bit. Compared to binary, only two bit. <clears throat> All right, we can also use different um, state encoding techniques, uh, for example, gray encoding technique. Okay, so gray encoding technique is almost similar to binary, but the difference is um, we don't change the, uh, the value of inside the bit to, uh, twice at a time. For example, to zero, zero. 0, 1, and then we didn't change 1, 0. It's supposed to be 1, 0 for binary, but uh, during this, we, we change two state, two value at the same time, but this, we change one value only, which is one here. We change, and the, this one remain. So this is actually a, a gray encoding thing. Okay. Uh, it's similar to the binary, okay? We use only two bit instead of uh, four bit compared to one help hot encoding technique. four bit. The reason why we choose is depend on the requirement. Okay, 
requirement. So we have the explanation here. So gray encoding guarantees the only state variable switch between two consecutive states. Uh, this is actually the, the, the benefit of having the gray code. So only one state variable, for, for example, in this case, okay, instead of become one zero, so one zero, two state variable, boba, like you, we use swap, okay, to so only one state variable, which is this one only change. And here, only this one only change. So that's actually gray, okay. It is appropriate for controller exhibiting long path without branching. So in the addition, this coding technique minimizes hazard and glitches. To, to join there, the purpose is actually to reduce glitches. Okay, glitches. We can also use this. Huh? Okay, but in terms of area, so this will utilize more area because we need four bit, four bit instead of two bit. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, gray versus um, binary so binary uh, compared to gray just now so this actually change two variable as in, at, the, at the same time huh? zero one and one zero so this more glitches huh? compared to uh, gray encoding okay gray encoding minimize hazard and uh, glitches so this is actually a summary huh? okay if you want to represent um how many state here one uh two three four five six seven and then eight state to represent eight state so both binary and gray requires three bit only okay three bit only however for one hot encoding you need eight bit so we can summarize here the number of bits Okay, number of bits equal to the number of state. If you want to implement the uh, one hot encoding. Okay. The number of bits here sum more than equal to the number of states. Okay, and you can see the pattern one until the MSB. Beginning from the LSB, one increasing up to the LSB, MMSB, sorry. Okay. Okay, this is actually your uh, pre-lab task. Okay, pre-lab task, no need to do in uh, lab assessment. This is for you to uh, practice. Okay, for example, design an FSM-based 3-bit binary counter using very long HDL, which is able to count up from 0 to 7 and repeat. So this we did in our uh, previous lecture. We use a simple count. So maybe I can write here. So always. So this is our previous method. Always add first edge clock. Okay. And then if we set, and then you mention count go to zero, right? For example, uh, this is three bit, right? so three prime D zero. Okay, else you keep counting count equal to count plus one prime uh, D1. Okay. okay, this is actually a synchronous counter, lah. synchronous counter that count up on every rising edge of the clock when there is no reset, right? So we can also implement this, okay? using a FSM, okay, finance technician, okay. The same that the binary counter counts at every positive here, like this one, okay, from 0, 0 until um, 1, 1, 1, or 3 prime, D, 7. Okay. Design has simulate and verify the design. So now we not uh, asking you to design using this way, we ask you to design using FSM. So you can write uh, design the same counter but using different way of coding, not like this one. Okay, this is actually the uh, typical uh, behavioral counter, count equal to count plus one. Okay, this is actually how we reset uh, if count equal to uh, zero and then we count reset to zero and then the count keep counting until maximum zero, uh, seven and then it will reset to zero. Right, so to implement it using state machine based technique, so this is actually the example of the code. 
So this is actually to illustrate to you, we have uh, one synchronous block, okay, synchronous logic, and the other one we have combinational logic to implement the, uh, this is what we call the state logic, okay, from zero until seven, okay. Here is actually to update the state. Need to update the state. Eh? Update. To update the state. Okay. From current state to zero. Uh, if you reset, else current state equal to the next state. Where is actually the next state? Which is here. We, we mentioned next state here. Right. So since this always block is uh, parallel executed, and then it will update here. Okay, current state equal to the next state. So where is the next state? Depend on the current state here. Okay. okay, this is actually this loop or this block is to update the state. So this this block is to uh, state logic. State logic block. Okay, block. You go back to the uh, previous lecture not. <coughs> I think. Uh, next logic, next logic, declare the next logic, next logic, the next logic means that now we, we are here, for example, we go what happened next, okay, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and so on. So in this case, okay, we can create the equivalent state table, okay. So what is a equivalent state table? So we have how many state? Zero until seven. So we have state zero, state one, state two, okay, state three, state four, state five, state six, and the last state which is state. Seven. Okay, so let's say this is this other state. Okay, state zero, state one, state two, state three, and state four, state five, state six, and state seven, which is this one. Okay, all right. <coughs> so what is mentioned here? So next state is actually your arrow, arrow here. Okay, maybe I use different color. So next state to state one. So what happened? So in this in this uh, case, we didn't specify any uh, um, condition. Means that from state zero, it moves to state one, move to state two, move to state three, state four, state five, state six, and state seven. Okay. If we reset, contoh, we are in state, any state lah, if we reset, and then it back to state zero. Means that if we reset in between here, so it will go back to state zero. So maybe use a um, different color. Lah. So you have this kind of loop. Lah. So if reset, okay, if reset, you go back to the zero. Okay, you can see this in your in your quarters. And when you click on RTL view and you go to the state machine view, you should be able to see this diagram. So this is when reset equal to when you reset. Okay, when you reset. When you reset here. When you reset. The current state means that any of the state, wherever you are at that time, you will go back to zero. And your output is actually zero lah. Okay. So this is actually will give you, you see where is the, the output here. You assign the out equal to the current state. Okay. Means that your output here, same as your current state. So this design is actually almost equal to its time number. Go back here. Time number. Not this one. You can modify. Style number here. You see? Style number two. 
you assign the output equal to the state outside of the two blocks. Okay, you can modify to make it become uh, like this one output inside the uh, uh, what we call the, 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 the always block. Yeah, or you can try using this way. Okay, you can modify, lah. but this number one, um, normally people rarely use lah. number two, yes, and number three. Okay, now we are uh, using number two. Okay, style number two. We assign the output at the outside of the always block. Okay, okay, outside the always block. So we have two always block. Remember to implement the state machine, finite state machine, you need to have at least this. Okay, one synchronous block, one combinational block that uh, implement the next logic block, and this implement the to update the state, okay, like this one, okay, current state equal to the next state, and you have assign the output. So in this case, the output is actually the counter, okay, that's count zero, one, two, and so on. So in this case, so assign C count out equal to current state. So current state now, for example, when we press reset, current state equal to zero, okay. So state zero to equal to number zero, okay, and then you count. Uh, one, you count two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then you look back. So this is actually what we call as counter generated from the uh, finite state machine. So in exam, if you are asked to design a counter without uh, mentioning the FSM, okay, so you please write using this way. Lah. This is very simple. Lah. Uh, simpler method compared to the FSM. Okay, this one just to illustrate to you the FSM technique whereby we have the two always block. Okay, one to update the state, one to do the next logic block, and we have we assign it become the output. Okay, the current state now be, uh, become the counter. Okay, it's count from zero until seven, and then it will look back to zero. Alright, so this is actually the template lah. So, saya boleh beritahu sebagai satu template for you when you uh, writing a, what we call FSM. So, use this template. So, you can modify this, okay. You can modify this. This is your exercise lah. Please take note. It's very important. You use this, okay. This template, implement this pattern. Sequence detector, this one, ah, huh? okay, this one, yeah, more one one sequence detector. So you can use this diagram, okay, implement inside the um, inside this. This is your exercise, huh? you do this inside this one. So exercise. Implement so more sequence detector. detector. Okay, that detects uh, more one 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 what are one one okay one one sequence detector. Okay, you can modify to one one or one zero one or whatever. So using this method. So this is your exercise. Okay, do it uh, on your own. Okay. I try to uh, go straight to the lab discussion because we don't have enough time. <coughs> right. So this is actually a discussion about your lab. So maybe before before this, we go to the lab instruction. So this is actually your uh, lab one. And this is your lab two. Okay. Please do your lab two from now. Okay. Do your lab two from now. Okay, so the, this is the pre lab task that we discussed just now. Okay, design a, a three bit binary counter using FSM. So the, the coding is already there here. Okay, you can explore. Okay, and now lab task number one you are designing a this state machine. Same as this one, same as this one, but you need to do is actually you, you modify. The coding here, okay. You modify the coding here, 
you use this template okay this template you modify modify here okay so for example so now we see the state, state state diagram so we need to have condition okay from state zero okay if make it bigger okay i zoom a bit okay so if uh key 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 equal remember in very long double equal if key equal to three prime b b seven so it means that your you are checking your password seven six so seven start from seven seven six five four three two one so if it is seven if the key is seven you move to the next state which is state one okay you mentioned this in here what's next so you go back to this code so you put here lah. if key equal to seven next state equal to three prime b zero zero one okay so here we have seven state same so next state next state equal to three prime b or three prime d one okay else next state next state equal to remain on the current state which is this one this is re uh, representing else okay three prime d zero okay so this is actually for state number zero state zero so in this case you go back here to state three prime b zero zero or three prime d zero so three prime b zero zero and then you have semicolon and then the g and then you have and so this is actually the body of your problem okay so if you are small okay right so in this case you have next state okay next state capital letter so n to be capital lah. be careful about this one because uh very long is case sensitive okay right so you settle about uh state number zero so now you move to state number one to three prime you can also use uh decimal three prime b one it's actually this is actually same as three prime b sorry yeah. three prime b zero zero one okay and then you begin and then you have n okay and then you write so if p okay equal to you check here equal to we are now in state one so key equal to three prime d six so three prime d six and then what you do so next state equal to next state equal to state number two okay else remain on state number one so here state number two else remain on state number one okay so you do for the rest uh, until uh state number final state uh, which is um state number seven okay so three prime b one 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 okay sorry one and then you have begin begin and then and same as before okay and then uh, okay so if uh you you remain on the current state okay next state equal to so in this during this this state you don't have any condition so you just mentioned next state okay next state okay. equal to three three prime 
uh, D7 to remain on the current state. To remain on the current state. Okay, so this is actually the, the, the body of this portion. You substitute here, you will get this one. Incremental. Okay, the state out here is actually you need to assign state out. You assign the output, which is here, assign state out here equal to current state. Okay. All right. Okay, this is actually your state machine. Okay, you can modify this. Okay, uh, creating uh, three different module. Okay, so one the top module you instantiate your state machine, in your top module, and also your uh, decoder. Okay, your decoder binary to hexam hexa decoder. So those who uh did lab number one on decoder you can straight away implement here okay and then you connect to the um uh, actually this is actually for the seven segment display okay and then you do a simulation okay because you don't do uh on fpga uh you uh, you you do a simulation okay all right so this exercise is optional because uh for those who manage or we want to do implement in fpga you can try this lah. Otherwise, you, you right. Okay, for task on lab number two, okay, lab two, you boleh modify ni tak semestinya. You pakai ni mungkin because lab number one is yours. Okay, same as other friend. Okay, lab number one, but lab uh, task number two, lab task two ni you modify. Okay, maybe you don't use the. Uh, uh, decoder here, you use different module. Okay? As long as you able to connect with your state machine. Okay? It's not necessarily the same as this. Okay? You boolean modify. Okay? For example, in this case, we do a, uh, what we call a, a clock divider. Clock divider that drive this. For example, ataupun you mungkin boleh buat something yang uh, bila block tu, uh, yeah, contoh, you punya unlock unit ni success, okay? When the user press the button to success, okay? They success uh, pressing the button, maybe you can uh, trigger some operation, some other operation, LED blinking, for example, a counter come out, uh, count up or count down, okay? For example, a night rider light, for example, and others, uh, so you can modify here, okay? The main core of your task is actually your state machine, okay? So when the state machine success means that we reach the state number seven ni, you can do whatever you can modify the uh, the design so that's actually the uh, flexibility uh, given to each of the group okay so you give flexibility to each of the group all right okay so ini adalah kalau you connect to fpga so this is actually the uh, we can use light switches lah light switches ataupun uh, so now slide switches lah, slide switches, toggle switch too, okay, you toggle up or toggle down, okay, you have three switch lah, three switches here, for example here we have zero, 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 okay, so zero, 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 and then you play another one, kita masuk seven kan, tujuh, Enam, lima, dan sebagainya. So, tujuh maksudnya you bring semua ke atas. So, this is condition yang mana you move to state number one. Ingat tak? Now, for example, state zero. This is state one. Okay. And then state number two, what happened? Six kan? Okay. So, six. Ini kan? Okay, one one zero. Okay. okay, and then five. Okay, and so on. Okay, <clears throat> so you can report right uh, represent this way in your report. All right, I think that's all. Okay, on the lecture part, I think you can explore. This is example. Okay. Okay, 
you can explore this. See how we represent the state. We have case, and then this is actually the state. Lah. Okay. And inside the state, too, we implement the signal or the, or the, the assignment. Okay. All right. Okay, any question before we end? Uh, stop the recording. <laughs>